Why am I looking at it? I need to stop looking at it. They say, never get a tattoo of someone else's name on your body. Oh my god. Okay, that is the most painful tattoo I've ever had in my entire life. It's crazy how this adventure deep into the mountains to meet Apa Wangad led to me extending my trip for two months. And I never imagined that these two months of the Philippines could lead to all this. Feelings of community, of comfort, but also a reality check that life is fleeting and everything can disappear in just a moment. I had two weeks to grieve. Let me tell you how this all started. Sometimes when I don't know what to say to people, I blurt out random things about their physical features. Like things I actually do believe. It's led me to some very awkward situations. Two years ago, I met this guy named Luke. You know when you meet a stranger and you run out of things to talk about? Me being the expert conversationalist, I did not know what to say other than, you have very nice hair and I like your tattoos. The second time I ever met Luke, he shaved off all of his hair. But he still had tattoos. Those are much harder to remove. For three months, I was basically living with Luke. And one day, I was on my laptop. And I found out that the oldest tattoo artist in the world is 104 years old. She lives in the mountains in the Philippines. And the only way to get a tattoo from her is trekking all the way up deep into the mountains to her village. I actually told him that I'd get a tattoo for him one day, but he did not believe me. Fast forward two years later, I convinced my friend Ponce to quit his job and travel the world with me. Ponce is actually Filipino. Ah, connections, connections. Ponce, how connected do you feel to Filipino culture? I'm just about the most whitewashed Asian American you could think of. When I hear the Philippines, I can't really think of anything much more than Manny Pacquiao or Jeremy Passion's Lemonade. Ponce's actually never been to the Philippines, so I thought to myself, what if I took Ponce back to the homeland so he could surprise his mom, learn a bit about his culture, and get some sick-ass tattoos. My mom's not the biggest fan of me, or Phil for that matter. But this trip is supposed to change that, right? We actually planned this trip for over seven months. Planning for this trip has just not been the easiest thing at all. It was this entire thing of, I was training Ponce to learn about video editing, about how to film, how to make to do this, basically. We kept pushing the Philippines back off next month. Like, next month we'll do it. And then something else came up, so we was like, we'll do it next month. August hits. Dude, she's 106 years old. She might die if we wait any longer. Dude, what? It was true, she's 106, man. Why are you gonna be so pessimistic? Everyone in my life dies. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward laughter. <laughs> yeah, drink that, you thirsty. Before this, I didn't really know how influencers make money at all. Oh, what's up? With me here, I have Social Blade's estimated monthly earnings and yearly earnings on my YouTube channel. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you think it says? Uh, how much monthly make... earnings? Yeah, at least twenty k. Yeah, yeah. Like it's what Social Blade thinks that Phil makes every month. Oh shit, twenty. Based off of no, based off of his followers and stuff. Yeah, I would say like fifteen. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably somewhere. Fifteen k a year. Like fifteen twenty k. Yeah, yeah, that's about like two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's yeah. that seems reasonable. What the fuck? <laughs> Phil! Jesus Christ! Estimated yearly earnings on the high end. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> He's like, I'm not Phil, you enough. cheap bastard. <laughs> Bringing Ponzi along to travel the world with me has a lot of pros and cons. I get to travel the world with one of my best friends. The con being, it's another mouth to feed. And trust me, it's a mouth to a bottomless pit full of nothing! <laughs> kind of like the homunculi from Full Metal Alchemist. Today, we are answering the question, how much money do I make from social media with 2.2 million followers on TikTok, 355,000 followers on Instagram, and 900,000 subscribers on YouTube? I can't believe I'm exposing this in a video. I can guarantee you, you will be shocked how much money I make. By the way, I want to make sure that you guys know that I'm not doing this to brag or flex on anyone. I just want to be transparent to give you guys an idea of if you do decide to do social media, how much money you guys could be making. Oh. Is that crazy what they think I'm making? 900K, yeah. There are some influencers that make close to that with yeah, my Yeah, but phone. it thinks you're making at least five. Phil, you're making at least five? <laughs>
That's not an answer, that's a laugh. <laughs> Most jobs probably fall in between 50k and a million. I know, like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's how the job market works. Yeah, but it thinks that at the lowest end, like the minimum minimum is $5,000. Here's this other website. This is Idle Network. Oh. Estimated to range from $100,000 to an impressive $1 million. <laughs> use the word impressive? Yeah, use the word impressive. All right, so on Instagram for 2023, I went from 169,000 followers to 355,000 followers. At one point, I had about like 372,000 followers, but I started posting uh, about my hentai addiction. About 27,000 of y'all unfollowed. This year, I have made in total, drum roll, zero dollars. Instagram isn't like how I make money, it's just a networking page for me. Now my biggest platform. On TikTok, I started the year with 2.2 million followers. I ended the year with 2.2 million followers. Is that right? Yeah, I haven't really been focusing on TikTok growth. I, I've mostly just been focusing on YouTube this year. But how much money did I make on TikTok? I just wanna make sure you guys know that I worked really, really hard for the last three years to gain over 2 million followers. So if you hear this number, don't be shocked. But this year I've made uh, $7,200 on TikTok. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of money, $7,000. Wow, I'm basically rich. TikTok doesn't pay that much. But finally, the one that you've been waiting for, YouTube. At the beginning of the year on YouTube, I was at 100,000 subscribers. And now at the end of the year, I am at almost 900,000 subscribers, which is crazy. How much money have I made in YouTube in 2023? I have made $33,000. Well, what, what is your net worth, though? <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. We actually just calculated how much we've made this entire year. Yeah. Entire 2023. Throw us the numbers. 57? What like, it mean? could be way higher. I just, I like, I know that you've said like, I know, like, so many great and super <laughs> like, lucrative you, things. Just because you may not have felt like it. Ponte actually knows the amount. How much we have made this year? Do you know how much we made this year? <laughs> around 40,000. How much? Yeah, we made around like 40k. <laughs> 40. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, really? <laughs> like, profit. Like, that's it. After everything's taken out. But they no. keep everything. No, 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 this is before. <laughs> no, this but Phil doesn't pay taxes, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're hoping I don't have to pay taxes. Fired. But you guys are probably wondering, how much have I made in sponsorships? You thought I've only made $40,000 this year? <laughs> I've worked with some huge companies. Huge. Three on TikTok. YouTube and Instagram for my sponsorships, I have made a grand total of I've made zero dollars from sponsorships this year. I make enough money from YouTube to kind of cover our basis. Forty thousand dollars, it's enough for me to get by on. Uh, so financially we you think influencers make a lot. It's it's not at all <laughs> Well you don't think money grows on trees? Now I know. <laughs> Does not so it's been quite the challenge to figure out how to make money for this trip. No, we're taking a bit of a gamble here, right? What happened? I just booked us a flight for the Philippines. Yes, dude. For the next few months, I taught Ponce how to edit and make videos while we were trying to reach out to different companies. But this proved to be a tricky task because we had quite a few distractions along the way. But some of them in the best way possible. But at the same time, we were just burning through money. I said that I would post every single Wednesday. I have only posted three videos this entire year. Ah, oh, I'm so sh- Things were not looking so great, but that's when our friend Ulrich helped us out. Hello, can you hear me? Ulrich got us connected with Magic AI, which is an AI-powered travel planner. And after a month of talking, we finally got into a phone We're call. We've been on this trip for maybe the last three months. It will be our first sponsor of the year, and we really want to look for sponsors that are perfectly integrated into what our audience wants. This Philippines trip, we're going motorbiking all around, hopping islands, and we think Magic AI is perfect for you know, showing the journey that we're gonna take. Would you guys you know, be down to sponsor our next video? Guys, it sounds like a really epic adventure. We would love to. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. There's no better partner than Magic for this video, especially. That's great to hear. Just based on what I've heard so far, it sounds like it's gonna Boz, that was our first sponsor of 2023. That's so sick, dude. I mean, it's the end of 20, it's our last video. So <laughs> we need money, guys. <laughs> I am so proud to say that this video is sponsored by Magic. We're planning out this Philippines trip and to see the oldest tattoo artist in the world, Apa Wong Ad, we actually asked Magic to help us. Magic showed us the route, the locations, the restaurants and the hotels in between. You can actually see on the map where the hotel is what Magic says about the amenities, and you can read online reviews, all without leaving the website. 
It saves us so much time. And did I mention it is completely free? I love free. If you guys like our videos and you want to support the channel, please click on the link in the description. It helps us out a lot. I'm just, I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> Pack up those bags, let's go. <laughs> We're really going. When we first got to the airport, I had to smuggle my laptop down my pants. In 2022, US Airlines made $6 billion on baggage fees. I've been traveling the world with these two backpacks. And even though they're both very small, this bag right here does not meet the seven kilogram weight requirement because it's holding heavy camera equipment. So to save about $60 per flight, I smuggle my drone, chargers, and laptop down my pants. My buddy Ponce, on the other hand, has way too much clothes. So we hid it under this bench and is planning on retrieving it after check-in. The grandma sitting next to us figured out our plan and we told her to make sure no one steals our clothes. As we awkwardly waddle towards check-in, my nervousness set in. Why go to all this trouble? But I kept reminding myself, $60 is at least 20 Big Macs. And I couldn't tell if I was sweating from the nervousness or the extra clothes I had on. But somehow, the lady forgot to weigh our bags. I thought this was our lucky day, but that's when we ran into security. When we returned to retrieve Ponce's clothes, the security guard was staring underneath the bench. He started questioning us, but that's when the grandma from earlier came to our rescue. She asked him to take her to the bathroom. Ponce here is what we call a coconut. Now, what is a coconut? Brown on the outside. White on the inside. <laughs> for Filipinos, that's gotta be racist. <laughs> for reference, banana is yellow on the outside, white on the inside. Then the Southeast Asian are just coconut. We are currently at the airport. Last time you were at the airport, didn't you meet a girl? Oh, uh, yeah, I got the airport wrist, bro. She friend zoned you, didn't she? You literally haven't been on a date in five years. <laughs> bro, come on. <laughs> um, what are you most excited about for the Philippines? It's where every country I travel to, it's always the people. And I wanna see in the Philippines because I am from there if I find any meaningful connection. You just hate the people there. That's a possibility, I guess, so. Have you ever felt like you didn't want to be Filipino? It was always neutral to me. I felt very, very disconnected from my roots growing up. So I'm going in with an open mind. Do you think you'll be disappointed if you don't like the Philippines? No. Well, truthfully, a small part of me would, but less so than other people trying to find their connection to home journey. I know Ponzi doesn't feel super Filipino. I am predicting that the Philippines will be his favorite country. Is there any Filipino stereotype that you identify with? No, I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't play the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> To the Philippines! To the Philippines! Oh, wow, that's some sh handwriting, bro. <laughs> is there free water? It's Air Asia, no. Is there free water? I'm okay, I am not a rich man. Air Asia, nothing's free, bro. The airport at four in the morning. Bro, okay. it seems like every Filipino person brought their extended family out here. <laughs> four in the it's morning. Four like, holy crap. That's the water cup? Get the fuck. That's a bag. What? <laughs> it's not even cold. Oh. You know, it's definitely not sanitary because you gotta take your hands to open up the inside. Yeah. I'm just thinking that we're gonna have Jolly Bee in literally like three hours. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so for this trip, I have three major goals. The first being surprise Ponte's mom. The second, visiting the oldest tattoo artist in the world. And three, to see maybe if Philippines could be my home in the future. We are surprising Ponte's mom in 10 days. So in the meantime, I planned a motorbike trip down south so we can see all of the islands. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my memories of the Philippines. It is our first meal in the Philippines. What do you think we should get? Jolly Bee! <laughs> Jollibee is the most popular fast food in the Philippines. And some people say it is the best fried chicken in the world. Since it's Fonte's first time in the Philippines, we had to get it first. Jollibee, Jollibee. Start with the right, the cutest wrapping day. That is so odd. I'm so hungry right now. I thought you dipped. I saw videos of people dipping it online. Is it everything you hyped it up to be? Mmm, very good. What is this? Okay. Oh, this is a little dry, I'm not gonna lie. This is the driest chicken I've ever seen. It's flaky and crispy. It's crispy delicious like they say, mm -hmm. but it's also dry like the Sahara Desert. I heard the spaghetti is sweet here. They use banana ketchup. I don't fuck with that, bro. <laughs> don't hate me, Philippines. I feel bad not liking it, dude. All right, let's try the burger. <laughs> no! I'm like actually sad. I'm getting White Castle vibe, oh. but not as good. I actually like this burger. It's just the meat is so dry. I don't like the bread. But the bread is terrible. The mango pineapple pie. It's so small. small. It's, in America, it's a big boy. Maybe we ordered wrong. We'll wait for the chicken sandwich. That can be okay. redeeming. That's so sad. Really oily. Out of 10, what do you give me? Four. Fuck, I really wanted to like this. I look kind of depressed now. Like, we were literally on the plane chanting Jolly V, Jolly V. But I swear everyone in the Philippines is going to hate me after this. We got to try it again. We have to try it again. Yeah. How to piss off a country in one day. <laughs> we don't like Jolly V. <laughs> 
There's this gorgeous beach town called Wall Wall. So we took a public bus three hours down south and checked into our accommodation. All right, guys, welcome to our $7 hostel. How are you doing? Shoes off. We're Asian. Okay, sure. Our bunk beds. Pro tip, this one time I was in a hostel and someone fell out of their top bunk onto the ground and shattered their teeth. And that's why I always get bottom bunks. Very authentic Filipino tool. This is called a tubo. Fill up with water and then you wipe your- Now, aside from constantly having anime playing, our hostel is only a seven minute walk from the beach. We spent the rest of the first day watching the sunset, and that's when I learned that Ponce can't swim, which is ironic because the Philippines is made out of 9,000 islands. That was unreal. I feel like it can't be worse than Dolby. <laughs> Great meal to end the night on. Talk to first girl. That's a win in my book. I talked to like one girl a year, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, ready for your anal exam? That was good. So apparently in the Philippines, it's traditional to eat with your hands. Better than Jollibee for sure. But we're gonna try Jollibee one more time to make sure that we went to a good place. Today we're trying to rent a motorbike for Ponce. Hello, sir. Okay. Are you nervous? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Hope I don't uh, crash. Just relax. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> You're very nice. I promise I will not crash your bike. Sure you won't. And then you take off the stunt and you just hold the brake a little bit. This one. Fresh and start here. He, I like how he doesn't even want to get on with you. Yeah. Let's go! Wow, it was so much fun. <laughs> you drove for literally a minute. Now we have three hours down south. I heard that you moved from Cebu City. I just wanted to stay here for... Lloyd's wife literally gave up her job in the city to come live by the ocean with him. If that's not true love, I don't know what is. Sadly, their house blew over because of a typhoon, but Lloyd is in the process of fixing it. Yes, he is literally rebuilding the house by himself from the profits of his motorbike renting business. So we grabbed a motorbike from them, and they were kind enough to hold on to our big bags while we head down south. Down south of Wall Wall, they have the craziest waterfalls. So of course, that's where we're headed next. First shower of the day. Wow. Dude. So apparently this is Ponce's first waterfall, which shocked me, but he told me, what's the point of going to see waterfalls if you can't swim? <laughs> A rainbow, bro. Whoa, what? Oh my God, dude. I know we're gonna see that low. <laughs> Good start to the day. That just that looks like an oasis, bro. We're walking in this waterfall and we found this cat. Do I bring it up? You can bring it. While we were walking from one waterfall to the next, I almost trampled this little cat. This little guy was sleeping in the middle of the trail, basically asking to be trampled on. He was lying there and he needed to be rescued. You are so cute. Rescuing jungle kittens is like deja vu from because five years ago. I rescued another jungle cat. Is that the cat from your hinge profile? And that kid has gotten a lot of matches for me. Exploring kittens for likes, that's shameful, man. Hey, actually, there's tons of studies that show that guys with kittens get less matches on dating profile. It says right here, men holding cats are viewed as more feminine, neurotic, and basically less data. I wanted to find the owners of this kittens, but Ponce hates living animals, and we still had a full day of canyoneering, so we made a deal that if the kitty was still there on our way back, we'd come grab him. This is gorgeous. Give me a workout. <laughs> My mans can't swim. I cannot swim, so. Oh, oh. On our way back, guess who we ran into again? I'm not gonna lie, his claws, they hurt really bad. I put Puss in Boots on my back and proceeded to rescue him up 1,000 steps. When we got to the top, we tried to find the owner of the cat. You can bring the cat. They want us to bring the cat? That's awesome. Yeah, Whose cat is it? I don't know. We just adopt a cat. Oh my gosh, dude. We can take the cat? Yeah. Can we take the cat with us? <laughs> okay, sure. I really wanted to take the cat, but because Ponce and I are traveling together, I pulled him aside and pleaded with him. But being the rational one when it comes to animals, he pointed out it would be extremely irresponsible if we took the kitten from its natural habitat. So we left our furry buddy in the hands of these kids and continued on our adventure down south. We're in the Philippines and it is so beautiful. During the middle of our trip, we actually lost our debit card, so we can't withdraw any cash. For the rest of today, we have to depend on the kindness of strangers till we get to our next destination. We spent the majority of our money on the ferry, so this kind police officer fed us some Asian Rice Krispie treats. I got bored, but there was this kid next to me, and playing with local kids is always free. We actually missed our second ferry, so we were stuck in our layover on Dumaguete for the night. We should go play volleyball with this kid. No, we're here till 7 a.m. Yeah, we gotta figure out some way to kill time. <laughs> time, alright, I'm gonna ask him. Alright, good luck. Bye, how's it going? Luckily, these girls invited us to play volleyball with them. Ponce told me he's really good at volleyball. Yeah. 
I'm not gonna lie, I think you've been detrimental to your time. Someone in town actually recognized me and gave me a thousand pesos because he likes the videos. The money to buy our ferry tickets for the next morning. And then we headed into the market that night to get some cheap one dollar shawarma rice. And afterwards, we found a nice internet cafe to spend the night in. We needed somewhere to work, so we found an internet cafe. Well, it says gaming cafe, but it's 24 hours. For how much? 20 pesos an hour, y'all. That's crazy, That's dude. That's so cheap. Oh, they're intense. Who's he playing about? It was a bit odd. The guy next to me was staring at models on Twitter and the AC was on full blast. But aside from those things, everyone was really nice. In the morning, we paid the internet cafe fee. We just spent 25 cents sleeping at an internet cafe. And during sunrise, we successfully took the ferry to Sigihor. No way, that's a legendary small orange cat. Are we looking at the Pokemon? There's always some sort of wild animals hanging out at most accommodations in the Philippines. I used to think that all cats were a-holes, but I find kittens in Asia much more friendly, probably because they aren't fed if they're mean. Ponce. Ponce. Food. Food. I like food. Good morning, y'all. We just got to our hostel. There's food. What the frick? This looks crazy good. These are our new friends. Hello. Hi. Hi. The local Filipinos invited us to join them for a homemade lunch meal of pork belly and sardines. I wanted to feed the cat sardines. Turns out he doesn't like sharing. Oh, wow. This happened to the cat? It's just a scratch. What do you mean? It looks like a lion scratch, bro. We just drove an hour at five in the morning to go cliff jumping. What the actual f They open at nine, man. Let's go find a beach to watch the sunrise. Which route should we take? Let's go right. This road isn't even on the GPS. Holy shit. Where are we going? This place is so secret. I knew that my first motorbike accident would be with you. What the fuck? Just, I am so what sorry, the bro. I just flipped over the bike. Yeah. What the f dude? Holy oh, That's going to be an expensive bike fix. It's actually not that bad. Oh, is that a rock legend there? Oh, shit. No, it's cracked. The rock went through the entire thing. Damn. Oh, f You just fart? I just farted, yeah. Let me be, man. We just got into a crash. How are you going to fart at a time like this, yeah. bro? I nearly shit myself. Let me fart. All you start to flip, and I literally try to open my camera app. <laughs> so I'm thinking you drive the rest of the way. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's switch off. <laughs> Your turn. It's actually not the beach we're trying to get to is called Let's Secret Beach. It. And I think it's called Secret what Beach because you, you had to risk your life to get there. You did it, man. They say don't travel with your best friends because your relationship will never be the same. But it's even weirder for us because Ponzi and I technically work together. I really want to make sure this trip gets off to a good start. For the past few months, Ponzi has basically lived on his laptop trying to learn everything he can about making videos. I don't know if this partnership will work out, if I can even make enough money to keep him long term, if he would even want to stick with me long term. But the thing I worry about the most Looking back on this trip and remembering heated arguments instead of joyous laughter. What if we aren't friends after all this? I tried to get on the motorbike, and Ponce tried to get on the motorbike at the same time. So all the weight shifted, but we're at the okay. slant, and my ankle couldn't take it. This is gonna be a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, that wasn't even cool. <laughs> I'm telling people it's because of that motorbike crash. <laughs> I'm not telling people that it's because of this shit. <laughs> at this point, we had two options left. Gonna help you about it. Drive home, or drive to the rope swing waterfall. But the problem was I would still have to hike all the way down on my bum ankle. And it's over a hundred steps. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Yeah, it wasn't the smartest idea. I blacked out. I I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't the prettiest. Oh, oh my gosh. Holy shit. All right, we can do this. <laughs> Are you a physical therapist? No, not a uh, physical therapist, but a bone setter. Oh, bone setter. No. 
Which one? Just a little bit, my friend. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Move it. Okay. Okay, we're good. Was it dislocated? Uh, just a little bit. Dislocated. Dude, did that feel good? I don't know, I heard a crack. What the fuck just happened? Can I walk? Oh, I, can, I cannot walk. <laughs> it feels good, but... I spent the rest of my days hobbling on the beach being attacked by wild dogs. Enjoying the sunset while sitting in tide pools discussing life with Ponce. I'm glad at least I have one person that stuck with me. Do you think you should pay for my medical fees? I wish I could, and I want to. But I am extremely broke. Just like my ankle. Okay. Times like this where we wish we had health insurance. That's, that might be my fault as an employer. <laughs> <laughs> Good benefits though, uh, I get to travel the world. You guys want to be in the podcast? Everyone tells us Filipino food tastes like ass, but to be honest, this barbecue stand on the side of the street was one of the best meals I've had while traveling. What we got here, Ponce? We got some longanisa, pork sausage, and some barbecue. I might be offended because she thinks I'm fat. Yeah, she gave me two rices. This one, I'm big on sauce. Soy sauce. You mix the suka. Try the longanisa first. Please. What are you doing? The fuck? That's the biggest piece ever. Carry it, carry it. Spit it back in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. You're just top 5% of Filipino food. Really? It's been better than I expected. I told you back at the airport that this was another country. Here though, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't feel a more significant connection to people. Everyone feels like your family here. I think I feel the most stressed out and the most fun I've had. Like, Why do you feel so stressed out here? The pressure to be on time to produce what we want to produce. It's one thing to be in an apartment where everything is in control. A more or less a routine schedule. Everything here, it's like, it's oh my god, it's all over the place. We are so freaking behind. Simply we put, like, you just suck at your job right now. I know, I do, yeah. But it's, we kind of knew that coming in, because like, it is a really hard job. Being a, a good content creator while traveling is so difficult. That's why there's no one out there churning out content like this that doesn't have a team behind you. Hope, yeah. What do you hope we do in the next four days? Where I think we haven't made like any, any friends. friends. Yes, <laughs> yeah, any friends. How's your night going, Phil? Freaking pissed off right now because you're not getting bit at all. I slept with my shirt off and I woke up completely fine. Even the mosquitoes see me as one of their own. Yeah, it's kind of funny because everyone in America thinks because I'm tan and Asian that I'm a Filipino, but the mosquitoes can tell apparently. Where'd you get this cat, bro? Oh, this cat that is the only thing keeping me sane right now. I'm not even joking. Like, I was this close to having a panic attack earlier because it's just so hot. There's no AC and I feel like so first world right. It's these freaking mosquitoes, bro. I, bro, he's like little Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> A few years ago, one of my favorite YouTubers, Ben TK, invited me to go to see the whale sharks. Unfortunately, I said no, and that was one of the biggest regrets of my life. So today, we are on a ferry to see the largest fish in the world. Yo guys, they gave me an assistant to take care of me, so... You should come on the boat with us. No, no. What if I paid for your ticket? No, still no. Are you scared of the sharks? No. Whoa! Those are whale sharks? When they mate, they actually become sperm whales. I can't swim. You have a life jacket on, you dumbass. Oh yeah. To be honest, we couldn't get that many shots because Ponce was struggling to swim so much underwater. Kids will literally play basketball anyway. Hi. Hi. I'm gonna slow down here because we don't need another accident. Please don't lose traction. Ah, 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 ah. This man tried to break my other goddamn ankle. After the whale sharks, we were about four hours from the next town. But unfortunately, because of my ankle, I had to let Ponce drive. And Ponce driving, it's terrifying. Jesus. It's like a landslide and then that. At this point, I just truly hope we can Hands are just cramping from death gripping the motor <laughs> We really just crashed again, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was so fucking scared, I thought we were gonna die again. Somehow that night, we made it home safe. I swear, Filipino people are the Walmart. nicest people in the world. The average salary of a person in the Philippines is $328 a month. And recently, I lost $200. That was literally all the cash we had. Why wouldn't Airbnb give us our money back? And to be honest, I was fully expecting never to see that money again. But to my surprise, my Airbnb host messaged me saying that they had our envelope full of cash and were waiting for our return back to the island. Which is crazy because if I lived in the Philippines, I probably would have taken it. And after a three hour motorbike ride down south and a one hour ferry ride, we returned to Dumaguete. Three hours later, we're back. 
After getting off the ferry, we arrived back to our Airbnb and they actually gave us our money back. I do have a TikTok. We were so freaking grateful that we decided to book the Airbnb to the end of the Where week. Where should we go tonight? Hi, Tiki Bar. If we meet any girls, we'll let you know. <laughs> we are transgender yeah, and she's gay. We thought that you are not straight. There's a word for that, right? Bisexual. Bisexual. Oh, what about me is bisexual. bisexual. <laughs> You're actually a feminine. <laughs> I'm, I'm full oh. Asian. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why your eyes is singit. <laughs> what does singit mean? Eyes are? Eyes. No. I hope you like my eyes. Yeah. I like your eyes. <laughs> I like you so much. He's our, he's our raised god. So everyone thinks that Filipino food is the worst out of all the Asian foods. And to prove them wrong, recently we asked locals what their favorite place to have dinner in the Philippines is, and then we take them to that restaurant. This is our new friend. Uh, Jose? Jose? What is your name? I'm Caleb. What is your favorite place okay. to eat in Dumaguete? It's gotta be Lantau. You wanna get dinner with us? Dude, I'd love to get dinner. He's paying, so. Me? Could you imagine if we were filming a video and we made you pay? All right, since we're paying a credit card, order whatever you want. The ones I've tried is the Sugba Budo, and that's just all meat. It has chorizo, has Filipino no barbecue, java rice, that is my favorite. Okay, so we got Whoa. the suba. Like I said, it's just a meat plate. Cheers. Cheers. It's like super flavorful, but it's not as tender as I want it to be. All right, rating out 10. For me, that's like an eight. Like a six. The fish, six and a half. I'm gonna be brutally honest here. For its price, Lantau is honestly the worst Filipino food I've ever had. Which sucks because Caleb is genuinely a very nice kid. So the next day, we had to give him another chance. All right guys, today we're getting a haircut. Ponte looks like a little rat. Yeah. Choke me, mommy. <laughs> I found a place in the Philippines that does $7 hair perms. Yes, you heard that right, $7. I'm always nervous when I get my hair done. I've had some really bad haircuts. Remember the racist South African guy? And Korean hair perms in the US are usually over $100. Now, so I thought to myself, what do I have to lose? Now it's in the middle of this bustling market, but worst case scenario, I'll just shave my hair and paint a blue arrow on top of it. We are actually surprising Ponte's mom next week, so I decided to get him a hair perm as well. That way we look more incognito. I asked them to make sure that it was not too curly, and well, it was not off to the best start. At this at this point, I'm currently regretting my life decisions. Good thing that you guys don't follow me for my physical appearance. When you're backpacking around the world, fashion, hygiene, grooming, and skincare usually drop first. After the hair perm, they send you to the stall next door that does $1 haircuts, which is wild. What the f Those are the biggest scissors I've ever seen in my entire life. Size matters, guys. The scissors were giving me PTSD from when my mom cut off part of my ear. This is where the last barber screwed up. To be honest, I don't know why he was using scissors when he was gonna give me a fade later on. What is happening? What? Oh! <laughs> I didn't like the haircut, so here's a video of me buying Ponce fake Crocs. Nah, I guess it doesn't look that bad after all. I don't know what Bruno Mars looks like, but I feel like it looks like this. And after our transformation, we met up with Caleb again. Can you take us to some good food this time? You want to try cheese stick? He took us into a local market where they have the famed cheese sticks and pastel, which is rice and meat wrapped in banana leaves. And this time, the food was genuinely so freaking good. We got to learn more about Caleb, who actually left America to live in the Philippines, which is kind of like the reverse American dream. But I kind of want to move here also. <laughs> oh geez, so Ponte's mom does not like me. If you know anything about Filipino families, they are extremely tight-knit. So when I asked him to give up everything and come travel the world with me, the only thing stopping him was his mom. She didn't want to see her baby go. But after hearing it was her son's biggest dream to travel the world like Luffy, she reluctantly said yes. Ponce has been traveling the world for over six months now, which is by far the longest time he's gone without seeing her. However, we found out that his mom and sister are going to be on vacation in Boracay. Now, Boracay is very expensive. Ponce and I are broke. A week before we left, Ponce DM'd 25 star hotels to see if they would help us with the surprise. After we revised our media kit, Astoria Boracay agreed to help us out. Afterwards, we boarded a flight straight to Boracay. We're at the airport on our way to Boracay to surprise your mom. Bro, this is the longest I've gone without seeing my mom. How's it been? Pretty nice, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I went two years without seeing my mom. It's the best two years of my life. <laughs> Bro, literally, my mom hates my career. So what do you think about my mom? <laughs> yeah, but that's why we're here, to riz her up a bit, you know? Let's do it. Phil hasn't slept at all. I'm so freaking tired right now, dude. So I'm seeing my mom in a couple hours. Pretty excited to see her again. Growing up, it's like the first thing I wanted to do is just like leave home and start living my life. And now that I am living my life, I realize it's kind of nice to have the people you love the most be present for your biggest milestone. The more I travel, the more I come to understand her in a way. Being in the Philippines opened my eyes to like the reality that my family, the way they grew up and why they idolize America so much. All I'm gonna say is mom, dad, I'm doing okay. You work so hard to provide me and the opportunity to choose what I wanna do with my life. And I'm choosing to be happy. It'd be great if you guys can be on my side. Anyways, love you guys, I'll see you soon. Okay.
they're actually waiting for us at the airport, I'll be shocked because I've only seen that shit. Dude, I actually see the guy. I'm texting my sister right now. The eagle has Oh my gosh, no data. <laughs> I found it so much cooler in my head. But it just sneaks away right out the back. Yo, by the way, shout out to Astoria staff because they treated us like royalty. So the master plan is that Ponce's sister will be taking his mom to the buffet here at Astoria Borkai. Ponce will dress as a waiter and we will have her sit down exactly where the maroon shirt is. And towards the end of their dinner, Ponce will come up and accidentally spill a gallon of water all over his mom. I don't know about that. I don't think that was ever part of the plan. Wait, you're not gonna drop water on her? I never agree to that. It's a better surprise though. <laughs> no, definitely not. She's already in a grumpy mood right now. Text me, Megan, when you're heading to the hotel, when you check in, and when I'll text you when we're gonna come out. If you see me, you know, don't be alarmed. Just be like, whoa, that guy's also very cute. <laughs> he also looks like Cleo. What are you trying to do, Riz up my sister? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna test this out. Hello, Mr. Philip. This is your complimentary drink, sir. Bro, you look so cute right now. Oh my god. You actually look like every other worker here. What do you think about my disguise? You look so great, sir. Do I look like you? Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so Ponte's mom's gonna be here in literally 10 minutes. Ten minutes. We got the outfit on. We're gonna set everything up. They're, they're right there. I'm a little nervous though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Shoot, he's going right now. <laughs> A complimentary drink from Queer Justin. What? <laughs> How are you doing, Mom? Hi. Hi. Hi, Mom. Love you. How are you feeling, Mom? Where's your mom? Love you, Mom. Yeah. Man, why am I getting emotional right now? Holy shit. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, they knew. They were all part of it. <laughs> That's why you wouldn't answer my text. <laughs> Did you eat? No, not yet. I didn't, I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> you guys took so long from the hotel. You look nice. You could work here. Uh, yeah, I borrowed a uniform from them. Mom, I have one last surprise to tell you. Cherry on top. We got you guys massages here. <laughs> Free of charge. Mom, what do you think of the massage? Leave me here tonight. <laughs> you like your surprise? We're taking you onto a sunset boat tour. <laughs> the sunset. The sunset. The sun. <laughs> We'll be setting, maybe. And after our boat tour, we started our adventure to the oldest tattoo artist in the world. This is probably the world's longest journey to get a tattoo. If you journey into the mountains, you can get a traditional Batak tattoo, a thousand year old tattooing method using a thorn to etch the ink into your skin. The ink is made out of charcoal and water. Luckily, we caught the last bus ride up north, but that's when we realized we made our first mistake. Monty didn't tell me that this ticket would be 2,000 pesos. You didn't budget this correctly at all. We, not. we just don't have any money. We truly just don't is there an ATM in Baguio? I have, thir I have 30 dollars left. Bro, what the fuck? I did not factor that in. I probably should have planned this out. Nah, that, that, one, that one's on me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Long Hot takes credit card? The AC on the bus was freezing and we didn't bring any warm clothes. I started pulling off the head covers of the seats to fashion a makeshift blanket. How many hours? Eight to nine more hours. Oh, we're gonna freeze to death. <laughs> it's so cold. After waking up in the mountain town of Bontoc, we surprisingly found an ATM. This line took us almost two hours because apparently this is the only ATM in town. This is pissing me the off, bro. We have just gone 19 hours without eating. It's been a pretty rough day. We better perk up because this is the highlight of our trip. We gotta turn things around right now. We gotta get some good food, get a nice cornetto or something, and just bring up the spirits. So, first meal. After asking more locals for directions, we tracked down the jeepney that drops you off at the base of the mountain. If you don't know what a jeepney is, imagine a pickup truck that you hitch a ride onto that transports locals to and from different villages. We paid 40 cents and were packed in with all the other local families. Is this guy gonna hang out in the back of the car? That's crazy! 
It got so crowded that people began sitting on top of the vehicle with the luggage. Everyone on the jeepney fell silent because the motion sickness was unreal. And I started to wonder, are people sitting on top so they don't get motion sickness? Get up there, Phil. This does not look safe whatsoever. Ponty and I decided to go up and try to test my theory. Just jump in, make a dumpling. I have a tendency to do things that may or may not kill me, but sometimes the things that feel the most dangerous are the ones that truly make you feel alive. On top, this guy asked me if I wanted to try, I think it was Oma. Ah, looks like drugs, bro. I kindly declined since I'm still sober, two years strong. The jeepney dropped us off in seemingly the middle of nowhere, where a local military man was standing and registered us. Perfect. All right, which bike do you want? I'll take this one. We were escorted by two motorbikes for 30 minutes, even higher into the mountains. We're almost there! And after getting dropped off at the starting point, we registered and hired a guide to lead us to the village of Buscalan. Welcome, Buscalan. To get to this 106-year young woman, it's a one and a half hour trek by foot from the base of the mountain up to the village. It's too hot. Panja chose to accompany us on our journey. Normally, when people just hike with sandals and an umbrella, you assume it's going to be a stroll, but because of the rain, we actually almost slipped right off the trail. The rain was kind of nice though, since this was the third day we had gone without showering. After arriving at the village, we were told we had to wait, so I befriended this beautiful Pupper. The village of Buscalan is home to the Butt Butt tribe. Here, we were told only women are allowed to tattoo. Most tourists come to get tattooed by Apawanga, who is the oldest tattoo artist in the world, the last remaining Mumbata. There is no appointment system for these tattoos. You kind of just hike up to the village and hope that Apo is in the mood, I guess. Dude, can you imagine wanting to go to the grocery store? You had to make that trek all the way down. We were informed that there was only a slim chance we would be tattooed today because we came so late, which is a problem because we did not want to restart the hike. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I'm genuinely very nervous right now. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! Wow! That is painful. <laughs> I describe the pain as someone gently stabbing a knife into my thigh over and over again. Bro, I'm on the verge of tears right now. Okay, that is the most painful tattoo I've ever had in my entire life. Really? Oh yeah, that's actually really painful. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot more painful than my other tattoo. This tattoo style is called buttock, which uses a pomelo thorn that is dipped in ink oh. made of charcoal and water mixture. Apu Wangad only does her signature three dots, which signify her and her two nieces, the last of her lineage. Oh, it fell out. <laughs> the thorn fell out. And without any sanitation, Apu Wangad picked up the thorn, put it back in the holder, and continued. Is it gonna be infected? <laughs> Ponty and I's tattoos are both pretty crooked. Oh man, look, it's still bleeding. Please keep in mind that Apu is 106. The tattoo is not the most aesthetic, but that's okay, because one of her disciples are coming by late tonight to give us our second tattoo. This is our host of our homestay. Yeah. What is your name? Ah, uh, Francis. Francis. Yeah. Francis is letting us stay at his place. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This is one of the coolest places I've ever stayed at, actually. Yeah, right. they don't have electricity. That's crazy. Yeah. This is all, all just solar gas. powered. Alright, so we are on the second floor. This is our room. Mattresses, I think we're gonna be sleeping on, or on the ground. I'm not sure. It's huge, yeah. yeah. Wow, I wonder you're so good looking, bro. You like this? Oh, yeah. Mongo bean, right? Mongo. I like Mongo. Apparently, they're famous for their rice. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, spicy. Oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> you're the artist. Yeah. Oh, Salama, thank you. Honestly, like, there's so many, like, good options. There's though. so many good options. I think I just get maybe the snake skin. The snake, the this one. This one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Should I do my forearm then, maybe? Yes. I, I'm, I'm trusting. My name is Josa. How long have you been tattooing? Yesterday. Ah. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time a woman has touched me. Calling for system change. You stay here for another day, so Ooh. she will show you around tomorrow. Mm. You go to the falls, like that, the rice fields. She just go to search you. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just to take a sounder. Oh my god. I just realized what? my mom is gonna kill me. <laughs> you cannot hide this. I won't be able to hide this. I have this tattoo eight years. My mom does not know. Definitely better, but still painful. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it actually hurts a lot. 
You're sweating, dude. I'm not sweating. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Uh, if Wang Odd was like a 9, 10, what does this feel like? This is like a 6. But there are times where it's like an 8. It's still better than my last heartbreak, which was 7 years ago. How do you find Philippines? This is a Philippines skin. And you're handsome also. I'm not gonna lie, this is uh, getting more painful as it starts to roll around. Uh, we have a new one. Apparently she's also single. Okay, nice. Good to know. They are single. He's also single too. Single. Ready to mingle, are you ready? <laughs> I'm waiting for you. Yeah, her is on fire. It's better than ours. When is your birthday? Today is my birthday, that's why you are the present. Yeah. Yay! 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 <laughs> we have to take her back to Manila. Yeah, you're going to Manila alone. He's going to stay here with me. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> what is your biggest dream in life? My biggest dream is <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> I one day is not enough. We'll go to the falls tomorrow. You alone. You're the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Only your bitch. <laughs> yeah. You can spend time with her, I'll spend time with you. Yeah, yeah. Nice. nice idea. I'll do your another design. Do you want? Or my name. Very yeah. My name. <laughs> name. She puts her name on my neck. <laughs> Philip, what's his last name? How do you spell that? V U. V U. Oh, like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm excited to start my new life here in the mountains. <laughs> Why am I looking at it? I need to stop looking at it. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. The pain kind of feels like someone is dragging a small knife across your skin, but gently. It's really not that bad. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, um, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a bad joke. Oh, it's pretty bad. Oh my god. It gets better, trust. It feels good, doesn't it, Ponce? It's like hard to talk. Oh, you're at that stage right now. Yeah, it's like really hard to talk right now. You're almost there. How are you done already? This is bullshit. Yeah. She is going to be slowly tortured. <laughs> I'm not lie, this is kind of rough. Because I feel like I've gone over this side many times already. Yeah, if I had to go through that for like three hours plus, dude, I would actually go crazy. No way. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Yeah, I'll just take the blood out. I yeah. love you, Ming Ming. Do you guys wrap it too? No. What do we have to do for uh, for aftercare? No, no need to. How's it look? It actually looks really, really good. Like, I'm not even gassing you up. It looks amazing, dude. At this time, I didn't realize that the tattoo was incomplete. Yeah. I was actually going to get Luke's name in Baba Yin, which is like their native language. And unfortunately for me, completing it tomorrow morning would be even more painful. Oh, hello. Hi, your husband is back. <laughs> what do you guys think? Yeah, it's uh, good. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Like her. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. That's so good. Made by our future wives. His future wife. Phil, so good morning. Your tattoo actually looks really good. That's weird because it feels like I'm in so much pain right now. What the hell? It felt more painful than my freaking ankle. Are you ready for part two? You forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that. Brian early. <laughs> You're gonna go to work again. Apparently Josiah said that it's gonna be much more painful today. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of weird because I just met these girls and we were joking about getting married, but in a way they kind of felt like the family I never had. I spent most of my childhood alone. Heck, I've been solo traveling for the past eight years. This place, Buscalon, doesn't have any service. You have to pay for Wi-Fi per hour and to shower, you're using a bucket. The hardest part about traveling is every now and then you'll meet some stranger that will become your best friend or feel like family for two or three days, but when you say goodbye, it's... it gets emotional. While saying goodbye to everybody, we actually spent too much time and missed our bus back. We recently joined this random tour. This is our car that we're staying in. Luckily, Gino offered us a ride. He's actually the operator of this tour. I'm pretty sure Gino saved our lives because the mountains started flooding an hour into our drive. 
This guy just slid into my DMs and he is probably the most attractive Asian guy I've ever seen. Hotter than Jungkook? Bro. Hotter than Jungkook, come on. Jungkook's like celebrity hot. This guy's like hot for normal people, you know? I'll be a judge of that. Oh my gosh, he's handsome. I know! <laughs> his chest is huge. His face is so perfect. <laughs> Recently, a male model DM'd us, offering us to stay in his mansion in Manila. This is Andre King, and every king deserves his palace, I guess. Should we stay with him? Oh, is he single? Why does that matter? Do you uh, buy? Maybe. Panza, you want some Nike shoes? Niek. Panza, what are you doing? Yo, I just pissed on somebody's butt. He walked by and you pissed onto him? Pee through the gate. Yes, pee through the gate. You gotta pee on the f***ing tree. It's gonna backsplash on my knees. What's going on, man? Andre, right? Truthfully, we didn't know what to expect out of Andre because everything about him screams luxury. Well, everything about us screams poverty. Well, maybe not poverty, but we've been washing our clothes in the river. It looks like the MTV trip type house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. <laughs> How much money do you pay for rent in the Philippines? <laughs> what the f***? Bro. Yeah. What, what, yeah. The confidence it takes to have a thirst trap of yourself yeah, yeah. in your house. If I ever own an apartment, but this is what I want. You should know how to love yourself. <laughs> because nobody else. <laughs> That's for sure true, bro. The confidence. Everything about Andre's house screams LA mansion. Phil, what do you think? I got rich friends. <laughs> A lot firmer than I thought. Not maybe the best for sleeping on. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you guys into a little secret. I'm a short king, and these heels, the extra height, I need that. <laughs> I just hit five foot ten. Really. <laughs> what do you think, Andre? Is he a natural model? Yes. Natural model. star. <laughs> <laughs> we spent the day eating chicken, drinking protein shakes, and he even treated us to free massages. But then the night, Andre wanted to take us to a club. However, we only own sweatpants. So Andre started giving us clothes from his wardrobe. This man was about to wear freaking Crocs in the club. <laughs> Andre took us out a lot in the Philippines. With him, it felt like we were with a celebrity. No waiting in lines or paying for alcohol. We had tables everywhere and everyone around us was gorgeous. Andre even took us to a few Filipino influencer events, which were kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, everyone sucks at this event. I'm trying to talk to 15 people. To be honest, sucked. everyone there actually ignored me until they found out I was a creator. And that's finally when people actually gave me the time of day. My last weekend in the Philippines was a mixed bag and it was capped off by me actually getting catfished. But I also met people I felt comfortable with. People that actually seemed to be interested in me. So while Ponce was getting ready to fly back to New York City, I decided to tour apartment in Makati. Hey, you're good, don't worry. This is perfect for me. You're the first person to live here. <laughs> Guys, I am reading my first rental contract. This is very exciting because I'm only staying for one month. <laughs> All right. Somehow, some way, like my travel experience here has been the best out of any other country I've done. I'll see you, bro. See you, bro. It's been a good ride. I'll see you soon. Okay? Yeah. And just like that, I was alone again. Well, just for a month. Ponce had to go back to New York for his mom's birthday, and I was gonna fly back to America next month to surprise Luke, which is also conveniently when my birthday is. Unfortunately, I can't sleep in my apartment tonight because work is being done, but Roger was kind enough to host me at hers. I'm not gonna lie, this is the worst in time I've ever been to. Okay, it's mid. Solid five and a half out of 10. Guys, yeah, she's emoting on me. She's trying to pay for me. Oh, hell no, she's not. <laughs> um, we just got to her house. Bro, what the frick? This, this looks like a mansion. They have security cameras too. Go ahead. They don't buy. Oh my god, this dogs are so cute. This is Kimmy. This is Carly. Hi, dog. Wow, this place is huge though. It's gorgeous. Hi guys, this is my room. Thank you so much. You're the best. Oh. Good morning, guys. I woke up and these dogs just came out of the middle of nowhere. Breakfast was that good. morning, Roger's mom made me breakfast, and then afterwards, Roger showed me to their backyard. That kind of doubles as a cat rescue. Oh my god. Oh, what the heck? What? Yeah. Yo, you crazy cat woman. <laughs> Our gardener is a crazy cat woman. Cat guy. Oh, it's his cat? Oh, yeah, Apparently, their gardener keeps rescuing all the neighborhood strays. Oh, meow meow. Hello, we are with Roger. Hi. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, oh no. <laughs> 
dog is sitting on me. <laughs> He's kind of fat. Why did you message me as Roger? I had a stalker for a while, so and I thought that if I guised myself as a guy, least likely to find me. How did you meet this person? Like, did, did you ever meet no. him in person? No, no, never. They found you online. Yeah, I'm not even anyone to be stalked at. Well, I'm but... like kind of jealous. Like, <laughs> no one's that interested in my life. Yo, guys, stalk him. Start fear for your life, like I feared for mine. Yeah, that's actually terrifying. He knew where I was, what I was doing. Really. He how knew do you, certain how do you know things he knew about that? me. He messaged me and said, this is where you were. Are you scared of men? No, not really. That would scare me. I that know. would terrify me. See, that's the thing. I'm not even sure if that was a guy. Could have been a girl. Oh, really? Yeah. Was his, did he put his name as Roger as well? Did you tell your parents to let me stay over? <laughs> yeah, so I just told them, oh, there's like a vlogger. They don't know anything about so they just go like, say, someone who vlogs and stuff like that and travels around the world. They were once travelers and they love traveling. So they understand uh, uh. that whole thing. And we've already housed like a lot of people actually. And here. animals. And animals, yeah. You guys have like seven cats and four dogs or something. Six dogs. You were born and raised here? I was born in Singapore, but I was raised here. Do you like living in the Philippines? I do. I really do. But it gets really frustrating and tiring. You, you had the chance to move to any Western country, basically. Why did you stay in the Philippines? Because of my passion here, basically, uh, dancing. Are all. you happy she moved back? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, my, my mom would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my sister's room, more organized than I am. Is so. that Jungkook? That's Jimin. It is? That's I thought Jim Jimin has blonde hair. Oh, they can change your hair, dude. I love how her bed is just on a, a crate. Roger wanted to take me to OnlyFans. <laughs> I got him done. I think it's really bold that you took someone from California to a Mexican restaurant. You know, if I keep referring to you as a guy, people are gonna think you're trans. Do I look trans? Not to like shit on them though. <laughs> some really are beautiful trans. Yo, there's some trans girls that I've seen that I'm like I would. Uh, my first Mexican food in the Philippines. Finally, I got to move into my apartment. It's small, but a place I can call my own for the first time in years. It's just so peaceful living somewhere. I've been on the road for so many, so many freaking years now. Like, I can't remember the last time I called a place home. One morning, I got to do laundry, and then I folded my clothes afterwards. It was so nice to cosplay as a normal human being for once. It kind of excites me that one day, I'll stop traveling and I can just do normal things. I met these random girls on a night out and now they're joining me. Hi! Well, I'm joining them technically. <laughs> I don't drink alcohol. I'm, I'm two years sober. Oh, wow. This girl is letting me see her chest. Damn. 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 It's actually quite cool though. Damn. Yeah. Show me the ink too. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you taking me? Welcome to the rabbit hole. This girl came up to me at a club and we started bonding over how much we hated the music and didn't want to be there. I told her I was new in town and didn't have any friends. She told me that going to a club is a pretty stupid way to make friends because you can't talk to anyone. So she invited me to come back to her apartment. Oh, he left the car on. That's ballsy as hell. He's sleeping. <laughs> he just pulled it back. Yeah, I was scared when I first moved here. But and then now I have a community. She lives with a bunch of girls and they call themselves Sorority on Six. So it just opens to your floor? That's, that's why we say Sorority on Six because it's a bunch of girls on the sixth floor. Uh, do you live on the entire sixth floor? Yeah, I do. I've never been in an apartment where the elevator opens to your apartment. Have you been here? While in town, I actually hung out with their friend group more than anyone else. I'm the type of person that wants to hang out with my friends all the time. Even doing random errands, like dropping off packages or adventuring through the grocery store for hours. But most of the time, people need their space. Lisa and her friends though, they made me feel so welcomed. Hot A cover? 
<laughs> Sorority on six almost felt like a home away from home. All right, Ian. Yeah. The question for you is, what is your favorite position? No. This girl commented on this one photo about my abs, and I said it looks better in person. Do you want to come over tonight? <laughs> <laughs> if you could hook up with anyone in this room, who would it be, and why? Oh, I'm doing all of y'all. Probably you. The girl I actually got to spend the most time with was Erica. People always assume because I'm an influencer from LA that I want to always go to the fanciest clubs or restaurants. The part of town I wanted to go to in Manila, no one else would take me there except Erica. Even though she's a boss ass businesswoman, she's still down to come visit the more local places with me. She took me around Quapo to get my camera lens fixed. Fonse and I recently broke our $2,000 camera lens. For you nerds out there, it's a 16 to 35 f2.8 G Master. I've never spent so much money on a lens because well, we're broke. And now the lens is also broke. We don't have a mic. Speak loudly. And welcome to Menstruation Nation. If you are looking to induce your menstruation, you've come to the right place. These are all um, herbal remedies, quack doctor ting. For 99 pesos. What's his name? Christian Dior. So what? Do you have like a Kobe Bryant? No, no. no. Christian Dior is a brand. But it's definitely named after someone. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, oh. Do you see that shit? The biggest reason why I travel is because I never fit in. Culturally, I don't feel comfortable in America. I didn't have that many friends growing up. This idea that you're working hard to get into a good university and then create a good job afterwards then maybe start a business and expand. It's all about making as much money as possible. I never was interested in any of that. I just wanted to experience the world. And I know I benefit a lot from America. Opportunities for good education are high salaries comparatively. And even when I travel, I understand my passport is a huge privilege. But recognizing this, I'm doing my best to give back where I can. That's why I volunteered in Ukraine or raised money for my friend Luke or any other small businesses along the way. Yes, you could say hiring Ponce on is expanding the business, but the main reason was I didn't want to do this alone anymore. I realized that traveling the world for new experiences has now become traveling the world to find a new home or even my first home. And I was starting to think that it could really be Manila. I really loved my new apartment. The view was crazy, well, but more importantly, I finally found a friend group. But sadly, that's when everything, and I mean everything, fell <clears throat> apart. All right, so my friend Jack asked me to call him, which is very concerning because Jack never asked me to call him. Like, honestly, me and Jack never call, so I'm very nervous. Good morning, man. Can you hear me, Phil? I can. Let's... <laughs> uh, what's up, dude? Where are you? I'm currently in the Philippines right now. What the? F I've been living in Asia for like a year now, That's almost. How's the Philippines? Oh, I love it here, dude. It's really. Oh, it's, I... Uh, I got this tattoo from the oldest tattoo artist in the world. Well, I was actually about to ask. I actually got it for Luke, bro. It, it says Luke in their native language. Fucking. Mo That's awesome. Yeah, but Philippines is cool. I think we're gonna. Um... Oh, good. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're, 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 go ahead. I'm actually going to be back in America soon. I fly in the 26th. But there is there is a reason. There is a reason for my phone. Um, I'm not sure if you heard what happened. Wait, like, what do you mean? Today? 
No, what happened today? Um, I hate to be like the bearer of bad news or whatever, but. day in Manila. It feels like this area right here, specifically this part of my apartment, has felt like prison to me for the last month, where I spent so much time by myself. I think for the first two weeks when Luke passed away, I, I didn't want to feel anything. I didn't want to go out. I just wanted to hide from the world. And so... I did. You'd be shocked how short form content makes you feel very numb to everything. Like it almost feels like everything is so fast that you can't even remember what you consume. It makes me think to myself, I make short form content. Does anyone remember what I do? Is anything I do important? Are we all just fleeting moments on this piece of rock floating around space? I haven't enjoyed my time here at all. I don't enjoy Manila. I don't know if this place is right for me. But how can I say that when I didn't get to spend time outside this apartment? This 28 square meter prison for me. Like w when your best friend dies, like you just... And everyone asks me like, oh, how are you doing? And I'd be honest, I'm like, I'm depressed and I can't leave this apartment. Like, everyone tries to make me feel better. But I don't want to feel better right now. Like, I don't think it's important to feel better. I think it's important for me to have this time to, to breathe and to, to grieve and to be by myself and be depressed. I, I hate when people ask me, like, are you excited to go home? Because me going home is, how do I explain that I have to go to my best friend's funeral? Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, 